Okay, I have a clean lid, clean water, clean brushes, a new paper towel, and I'm ready to tackle the top of this worksheet. So the first thing we're gonna do is, yes, we are gonna continue to be mixing in our lid, but um, this time what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add a little bit of brown, a little bit, I think I did too much, a little bit of brown to our colors. So as you can see, I took purple and I added brown and wow, that turned out way too brown. So I overdid it. So I'll just maybe use this part of the lid and you guys can see that the purple is really, really saturated. It appears as though the brown is too. The reason we're doing this, you guys, the reason we're adding a little bit of brown to our purple and I'll just test until I feel like I have found a nice purple. Oh, I like that. Okay, so once you have mixed a purple that feels earthier, when I say earthier, I mean like you typically in nature, purple's a really bad example of this. We should have probably started with blue. But in nature, you rarely see like straight up bright purple, unless of course it's on a flower. And so again, this is a bad example because there really isn't a lot of purple in nature. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use this example with the blue. So in nature, you rarely see water or a sky that's this bright of blue. Instead, you see a more earthy tone of blue. So let's actually do that. Go ahead and take some blue. Add a little bit of brown, don't overdo it because a little bit of brown goes a long way. You can see that. Now, I have blue. It's just a little bit more natural. I'm not gonna lie, you guys, I had a little bit too much coffee this morning and I'm having a hard time staying in the lines now. So if you are listening and you caught that, come tell me you're extra caffeinated, Mrs. Hatcher, and I will, uh, I'll give you an extra credit point for being a good video listener. So again, I'm just gonna work my way through the rest of the colors, adding the tiniest drop of brown. When you get to the yellow, be so cautious, because again, a little bit of brown goes a long way. Test it on your scratch paper to find that that earthiness, the, the green that you would really see in grass, the blue that you would really see in the sky, um, because we don't see a full saturated, a fully um, solid hue. So a solid hue is a color with nothing added to it. So these are all solid hues. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move to our scratch paper to do some gradients. Um, this is a gradient where it goes from dark to light. As you can see, they're not that great. I've already messed up a few times, but I wanted to see you, show you guys um, just some common mistakes that people make with gradients. So we're gonna switch to our brown brush, make sure that it's nice and clean. Then you're gonna dip it in your clean water and you are going to paint a, like a clear rectangle. So this method is called wet and wet. It's where you wet the surface before you paint into it. So we're gonna do this a couple different ways so you can see um, just the best method that works for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna load my brush with green paint really, really, really well. So it's super saturated. And then I'm gonna start at the top of this rectangle. You can see it starts to bleed its way down and I'm gonna slowly work my way down. I do think I need to pull a little bit of water uh, and paint off my brush, not a lot, but I want it to get lighter as, oh, I did too much. I do want it to get lighter as I work my way down. So I'm actually gonna start that over because watercolor does need to be kind of like a continuous thing if you um, try to just like 
If you mess up and then you just try to go back to that one area to fix it, it doesn't usually work. You usually have to repaint that whole area. So now I'm just working my way down this wet rectangle until it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And see how I have this puddle down here? That's where I'll dry my brush off and I'll kind of just clean that. Work my way back up until it's nice and smooth. And hopefully those should blend together well. All right, so that's a gradient with your brown brush. I don't love that this part isn't bright green, but we're gonna start to see that the green brush actually makes it a little bit easier. So if you have a bigger, I'm sorry, not green brush, the white bristle brush. If you have like a size six, that's gonna be a little bit easier than the small size four. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna do something similar, but I'm not gonna do the wet and wet. Instead, I'm gonna just go ahead and fully saturate my brush with green paint. I'll start with that same kind of line that I did before. And now I'm just gonna clean my brush, tap it off just a little, and work my way down. As I go, I wipe my brush on my rag so that I'm lifting paint out of my brush. I'm gonna go back up and kind of fix this transition so it gets a little bit lighter, faster. As I mentioned, gradients are so hard. You can see I've got a flaw here. So this is where I have to go back up, kind of redo this whole area to make it a nice smooth transition. So practice this a couple times. Practice it using this brush with the wet on wet method. And once you feel like you're comfortable with it, then you're gonna go ahead and paint it on here using any color of your choice. I'm gonna do the wet and wet method with this brush so you guys can see that as well. But remember guys, art should be an experiment. It, this is how we do creative and visual problem solving. So not only are we problem solving what looks good, we're also problem solving what techniques work best um, and how to approach different, different media, different parts of our painting, different brushes, different amount of water, different papers. These are all things that you have to test before you do this to your final draft. Okay, I definitely like this one the best. So I'm gonna go ahead on here, I'm gonna do the wet and wet method using my white bristled size six brush. Okay, I don't know if you saw this, I just went back up to the top because I couldn't get my gradient to span this entire rectangle. So you might have to go from the top down a couple different times until you get it to go all the way to the very end of the rectangle. That is your challenge here. I know you can do it. Okay, right at the very end, I am gonna take all the water and paint out of my brush and I'm gonna kinda wipe that out so I have it almost white at the end of my gradient. And there is your gradient. Boop. 
We're almost done. It's time to do some merging of complementary colors. So choose two complements. I'm gonna choose red and green, and I'm gonna put a lot of red on one part of my palette lid, and a lot of green on the other part of my palette lid. Whoops, I splattered. And then I'm gonna start to mix different variations of red and green together. So I've got green right here, that has a tiny bit of red in it. Okay, let's keep blending this over. And then I have red with a tiny bit of green in it. Ooh, look, it's like the, those earth tones we talked about. So mixing complements also creates earth tones. Now I need to do equal parts of red and green. So if this didn't make sense, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say this very simply. You need solid green, a tiny bit of red in your green, equal parts of red and green, and then you need a red with a tiny bit of green in it, and then you need solid red. And if you have all those, this should be pretty easy. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna start with my red, since I've got a blob of it on my paper anyway, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint a little less than an inch of a square And then I'm gonna clean my brush, wipe it off, get that next shade of red, which is that reddish green, my earthy red. And I'll do another square right next to it. But I'm doing it so that they overlap just a little because this is where I want the bleeding to take place. So my colors actually start to blend together in a very smooth fashion. So see how they're just kind of like bleeding together naturally? All right, now I'm gonna take my reddish brown, I'm sorry, my equal parts red and green that made that kind of a muddy brown look, which some people say is a hideous color. Other people say it's nature and beautiful and earthy. I might need to kind of go back in with my value that's my color that's a little bit more red. Just let those bleed together. Beautiful mixing here. Now I'm gonna move in to my greenish red area. So that's my green with a tiny bit of red. I'm overlapping over the previous color. We're almost done. And now take my, oops, gotta clean my brush. I'll take my solid green. And finish this off. Now I can tell there's gonna be a pretty fast transition here, so I might go back in with my previous shade of green, just to mix those together. And look you guys, we are done just in the nick of time for me to start teaching. Good luck. All right, you guys, those are my earth tones. Call me crazy, but I like them better than the solid hues. With my earth tones, I kind of chose that middle amount of saturation, so they're not too light and not too dark. Next, we're gonna move on to our gradient. 